Best part of the season, is he at playoffs? <laughs> it's time. <laughs> League one and two seasons done. It's settled with knows in there. We've got Bolton, Peterborough, Oxford and Barnsley for League one. And MK Dons, Donny, Crew and Crawley for League two. I'm going to have to play a little bit of a guessing game with Championship because they think they're cool. They think they're like Premier League 2, don't they? So they finish a week later and then Barnsley Bolton first game's on Friday. So to get it all in before there's any bias involved or first leg comes in, I'm going to have to have a little guess. But that's where we'll start anyway because current race for second is between Leeds and Ipswich. That's going to go to the last day. But Ipswich have basically got it in their hands now and I hate Leeds. Meaning Leeds take first playoff spot and then making up the rest of it is Southampton in fourth. Last day, Norwich, West Brom and Hull are all fighting for it. But I think Norwich might drop points away at Birmingham. So I've got Norwich in sixth, West Brom in fifth, then Southampton fourth, Leeds third. And let's have a laugh, shall we? Let's start with Leeds. Come on. The record in playoffs is shockingly bad. Like, terrible. I think they've been in it five times and lost every single time they've ever been in there. They played QPR away on Friday night, which were fantastic watch. They were crap. Like, easiest way of putting it, they were crap. My way of looking at teams at top of this league is looking at next season in Premier League and if they can stay up. Because obviously, if you're not going to drop 200 million quid on arrival, then you're going straight back down. Or if you haven't got a squad that's been up there, come down, up there, come down, like Norwich are known for doing yo yo in a bit, where you can drop loads of money over a few seasons, then you've got no chance, really. So, thinking about who can actually stay up, Leicester are starting with points deduction and ultimately the crap, even though they won't league. So, I think they come down. I don't think Keep Switch are there yet, squad wise, even though they've got best manager. Leeds, as much as I hate them, if they go up, I think they'd be probably only one out of the top four that were the racing for autos all season. I think Leeds are the only one that would stay up. Some of the players that they have got are just a class above. Like Somerville. Are you joking? I knew about Somerville before Leeds fan, by the way. Just thought I'd put that out there. They've got a 40 million quid forward line. They've got Ampadu, Nonto, Dan James. And defensively, they're not best players that I've ever seen, like personnel-wise. But they've conceded second least goals in league. And up until Watford away... They've not conceded a goal from open play this year. Defensive record this season has been nuts for them. But after that QPR game overnight, and then a few other games I've seen recently, which is basically all of them with Leeds because they've scored 40 times a year in championship, they've dropped off at the wrong time, and momentum is a big, big thing. They're going to lose out on autos on last day. Mentally, it is going to hurt them. But going up against his former club in Norwich, if it is third versus six, if it works like that, just straight off bat, I, I don't think they'd win away at Norwich. I don't think they'd win that leg. And they would probably win at home because Ellen Road, on big games, he's won at best in it. Just don't ask them where they all were when they were shit. I mean, Lee fixture between these two. Leeds did win home and away. But like I said, mentally, I think they'll be in gut after losing out on autos on last day and being, what, the clawed the way all the way back from being a 17-point gap behind Leicester to then fading off again. If they do go through and get to Wembley, obviously they'll take They'll take half a million, won't they? Because they're the biggest team in the universe. Because Leeds is a club filled with fans from Uddersfield, Barnsley, Bradford that just pretend to support the local, but they don't. They just pick biggest club in a 30-mile radius and decide to support them, which is even more cringe than glory supporting a Man United. You're glory supporting a shit team still. But regardless, I don't want to get into that tangent again. Norwich have been promoted from this league, it feels like, every two years for the past decade. They're just like this. They're up, down, up, down. They, they are the Championship Premier League Rotherham of... Badly. To the point where I think they just have to get to Wembley. Leeds mentally, they'll be finished. I feel like it is probably a youngerish squad. I know Fark's been promoted from this league a few times, but no, I'm biased as well. So, first team to Wembley for me is Norwich. Have that. Southampton and West Brom in other fixture. Two teams that have been sat in what feels like fourth and fifth since first game of the season. They've just been there all year. We're destined for one of these to get to Wembley. If West Brom actually end up in there, who knows? By the time you're watching this, it might, the whole might have got in. But they've both hit stinking form at the wrong time now. They've had three losses in a row for both before last day. And Southampton, to me, just look like ready-made bottle jobs. They've had a few chances at different points of this season to break into autos. Like even recently, the, a couple of weeks ago, when they had games in hand, they could have gone level on points with Leeds. Then they've shit bed again, and now there's six points behind them. Like, the gap just... They keep doing this. They concede a lot of goals for level of squad that they've got and the amount of players that they've got the top top championship or premier league players and the risky football that they play where they're just constantly coming out from back you are asking for trouble every week but if you're going to take that amount of risk in playoffs it's, it's a different beast we all add a pressure that comes with these games it, it won't go down well especially at wembley if they get there can you imagine trying to force it out from back in front of ninety thousand people where after them you've got forty thousand whistling you at every touch it's not going to go down well, that. And against an half-decent side in Leicester, they lost 5 nil of a week. Last game at regular season is Leeds away. Just can't see them winning that either. So they're going to go into playoffs on a disgraceful run of form. If they can beat Leeds away last day, then might give them a bit of something. But if they lose, they're going into playoffs on four losses on bounce. Playing risky football with a young squad that clearly aren't built for any sort of mental battle with the bottle positions that they've had over stages of this season. However... Same as with Leeds Norwich fixture, Southampton have won home and away against West Brom this season. They've got 
a ridiculously good record against them as well. At the last 10 games between these two sides, Southampton have won eight of them. But guess what? I think that all changes in playoffs. West Brom have just lost 3-0 to Wednesday and basically confirmed that they're staying up. So in all honesty, I want West Brom to lose 10-0. But out at teams in playoffs in this league, West Brom have got best manager in Carlos. And you go to playoff final with Huddersfield, for fuck's sake. They haven't lost to Forest because VAR's crap. Something that Forest are now playing victim about week after week with VAR, which is the only reason that they're in Premier League in the first place. We love VAR, we love it. Yeah. It's going to be tight. I could see it maybe going to penalties. And... I think West Brom will win. So, despite it being a four, then three horse race for top two all season, Leeds have broken record amount of points to not get top two. Southampton with one of the highest points tellies ever to not get promoted. We are looking at a West Brom and Norwich final. Let's get all those lads at Wembley first, and then we'll say who's going up. So I can keep you for new duration. League one next. Yes! We've got Bolton, Peterborough, Oxford, and Barnsley. Barnsley were going to be finishing fifth until the last kick of game against Northampton. God, we are crap. And we might as well talk about us first. I mean, we've had no win in his last four games. We've had four losses and two draws. We've only won one game in his last eight. <sighs> Just great, innit? This is exactly what you want to take into playoffs with. But let's talk about the fact that I think we're going to be first team in history that's going into playoffs without a manager, which I'm happy about, to be honest. Collins being sacked, in my head, is a, a stroke of genius. I don't know what we expect to gain a gaffer from Tampa Bay Rowdies. Like, I didn't even know what they were until he came in. If you just said Tampa Bay Rowdies to me, I'd have thought they were a baseball team or something. The football that we've been playing is horrific. It makes you want to scratch your eyes out. Because we've got some very, very talented players in this squad that are being chained up by this knob. I mean, I wish we'd just get Warnock on phone for playoffs, to be honest, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> just We could just get him on like a one-month deal, a three-game max deal, and give him 50 grand if we go up. He's a Barsley fan anyway, just bring him home. But instead of doing that, we've sacked Collins, which I'm happy about regardless of what happens, to be honest. And we've got Discord's interim. But we're still going to be playing Collins ball regardless through playoffs. We should have sacked him a month ago. And now we're going to be playing Bolton in a replay of what was last year's semi-final. We've played him nine times in two seasons. I am so bored. I was so happy to start with because we were going to finish fifth at the time and then play Peterborough. I've not been to Peterborough's ground before. I went to Bolton three times away last year. I've had enough. And on top of that, Bolton have only lost one game in the last 12, so that's just fantastic, isn't it? Most of the time we play each other in recent history, it's a draw. Last time we played each other, there's two wins either side and six draws. It's going to be very cagey. No team ever runs away with battering other one. Both have got a lot of very good players on each side. We are just the new Sunderland and Portsmouth in this league. Sat here playing each other forever. None of us are good enough to go up. But it'll, be, it'll be Oxford that goes up. I think... I, I am actually going to try and not be biased. I think it'll be either two draws in both games or a 2-1-1-0 one, one, either side. Something like that. I think this is nailed on for penalties. And second leg is away at Bolton. So if it goes to pens there, I will probably shit myself. But like I said, remove all bias. My winner for this game and heading to Wembley is Barnsley. I feel like we've just been so crap for so long that eventually it's going to change. And we're better to start than here. This is the level of delusion that I've got to take myself to. I talk about momentum with every other side, but that don't count here, okay, for special circumstances. First lads at Wembley in League One are then Reds. Peter in Oxford is second semi-final. I feel like the majority of people have just been looking at this playoffs, these 36 teams, and just thinking, well, Peter and Bolton final, and they're the best two teams. If you're looking at that on surface, that's fair enough, but it's, it's, there's a lot more to it than that. Don't get me wrong, Peter are a much, much better side in terms of players and managers between them and Oxford. They've finished higher in the league, they've been in playoffs basically since it started. You'd expect them to just win that. However, very young team, not a lot of big leaders in it. The ones that you class as big leaders don't even start that much anymore, like your Clark Harris, for example. Obviously, circus that happened last year in playoffs where they were 4 0 up in first leg against Wednesday and then ended up losing it in what is one of the biggest bottle jobs in history. Mentally, they're probably quite fragile. Like, regardless of whatever happens, who scores first in first leg, I feel like they're subconsciously going to be thinking, shit, we better not blow this lead or shit, it's happening again, we've bottled it again. On top of that, five games ago, they played Oxford away and lost 5 0. And it's obviously going to be a close game I don't know, play us what do you expect I think Oxford will win I really do they've been putting some big score lines away in the last five months they got five against Peter but like I just said four against Burton four against Fleetwood they've only lost one in the last eight games and that was to Lincoln who at the time were on some stupid run I think it's just set up perfectly to be exact opposite of what everyone thinks it'll be in final so instead of a Bolton Peterborough final I've got a Barnsley Oxford one which is a replay of biggest game in club football history Papa John's 2016 final. League 2, we've got MK Dons, Donny, Crew and Crawley. We'll look at MK Dons, Crawley first. Now, it cannot be said enough how good of a job Scott Lindsay has done at Crawley. Last season, they were three points away from being relegated to non-league, something that smaller sides sometimes 
ever even come back from. Like, no disrespect to Crawley, but they're not a, a Stockport or Notts County. Even, like, eventually they can look like your Oldham's Rochdale Scunthorpe's that you're just waiting for them to come back at some point. So to have gone from keeping them up after joining in January last year, to then having them finishing playoffs season after, he's serious top work. He's manager at season in this league. Even though Donny went from like 20th to 4th or whatever, Crawley manager is manager at year. But they're not richest team in the world by any means at all, Crawley. Especially with state at Summit teams in this league these days. Well, they've been promoted, haven't they, with Disney money, but do you know what I mean? But I will just say it nice and early that despite all the good work that they've done this year, this is where they meet the demise. MK Dons, as much as they shouldn't exist, are a really good side. Mike Williamson is a good manager as well. One I wouldn't mind at Barnsley, to be honest with you. They score a lot of goals, but they're not shy with conceding either. They're similar to Southampton, to be honest. They're very, very risky playing it out front back. These are probably even riskier than Southampton, which I didn't think were even possible. And when you're playing this way, with players at MK Don's standard and not the John Stone it. standard at Man City, you are going to fuck up constantly and concede a lot of goals. But despite that, they should, and I think they will get past Crawley. And they should. They were only relegated last year, and they've got strongest squad out of all teams that's come down. So, so they should be at playoffs. Well, actually, they shouldn't. They should have probably gone up automatically with squad they've got at manager they have. And next one is Donny and Crew, which ain't even worth getting into. Well done, Crew. You've had a really, really good season, but Donny are going to Wembley. And just like that, we've got his finals. We have got West Brom and Norwich in Championship, Barnsley and Oxford in League 1, and MK Dons and Donny in League 2. And for League 2, MK Dons, very, very good squad, very good manager, but Grant McCann is seriously underrated. He really is. I had Donny at playoffs in my predictions at the start of the year. Um, we'll ignore all the rest, but just, just look at that one and not else. McCann is one of the best gaffers in League easily. 10 wins in a row, then a draw at Gillingham to finish season. Like I've said about every team in this video, apart from one, momentum is a very scary thing. So joining Stockport, Wrexham and Mansfield in League One next season, for me, is Doncaster Rovers. Woo! League One? Yeah. I cannot, for the life of me, sit here and say that I think Barnsley are going to lose. I just, I just cannot do it. The only way around it, I think, is by saying whoever wins out of Barnsley and Bolton will get promoted. And for me, that is the boys in red. If we were at Real Madrid tomorrow, I would back us for a point. I don't care. I've got a double South Yorkshire promotion. So going up with Portsmouth and Derby from League One to the Championship to second best league in the world is them red. Yes! And then for Championship in West Brom versus Norwich, I'm going West Brom. I've said it all year. Carlos is best manager. Very similar squads in terms of talent. Norwich probably just edge it with players that they've got. But Don Carlo is that man. He is that man. Leicester, Ipswich, and Baggy Boys promoted to Prem. So that's my playoff team's done. Let me know what you think. There's probably a large amount of people that disagree with League 1-1 one, one in particular. But if everybody thought the same thing, this world would be a very boring place, wouldn't it? Eh? West Brom, Barnsley, and Donny, congrats, boys. You've all been promoted, because I've said. Make sure you're subbed. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in a bit. And Barnsley in the championship. Yeah!